Live from the Moscone Convention Center in San Francisco, California, it's The Cube at Oracle Open World 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsor, Cisco Systems, with support from NetApp. And now, here are your hosts, Stu Miniman and Jeff Frick. Hi everyone, welcome back. You're watching theCUBE. We're at Oracle Open World 2014. We've been here for three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. We're here in day three, we're excited to be here. It's a lot of buzz, a lot of energy, and actually our next guest is going to provide a little historical perspective. And I'm joined in this segment by my co-host, Hi, I'm Stu Miniman with Wikibon.org, and uh, pleased to have uh, not only a practitioner, but a CUBE alum, uh, Stephen Zay. Uh, welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks, very so much. Uh, you're SVP of IT at uh, SEI, uh, financial services company. Uh, tell us a little bit about, it's been two years since last time we talked to you. For those are audience that aren't familiar. Uh, what's your role, uh, how, what does SEI uh, do? Uh, well, SEI is in the uh, financial services space, and uh, we provide technology and investment products to uh, intermediaries, banks, and advisors around the world, primarily in the UK and the US. Um, and uh, we've been uh, embarking for the past 10 years on a, on a project uh, of, 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 of very grand proportion for our firm to build a new platform to serve that uh, set of constituents. Uh, and it, uh, it's on all new technology, and it has uh, global reach, and is intended to serve clients of all types and sizes around the world, as I mentioned. Uh, we spent uh, well over $750 million on this platform, um, and it's uh, a venture that we've started in since 2003. Um, the linkage here is that we built this platform around the notion of serving um, clients and intermediaries from, uh, in a global perspective, and the platform has to support different types and different sizes of firms. And uh, we uh, invoked uh, the use of UCS as a, uh, as a journey off of the Spark platform a few years ago. Um, and it has proven to uh, create a great deal of value in our ability to su support that constituency on this new platform. Yeah, so wow, you started this in 2003. That predates Cisco UCS, it predates all our cloud discussion. Right. Flash was something that hadn't made its way back absolutely in the enterprise. Right. So can you walk us through a little bit, what were you facing and how do you build a platform that can grow with some of these new technology adoptions? All right, the, yeah, probably the most practical case we have is in the UK we have clients who uh, use our platform but also uh, consume uh, securities investment products from around the world, including the US. So though this is a brand new platform, it still has a batch element to it, and that batch element, since it depends on US pricing as well as European pricing, the window to run that process is much more narrow for our UK clients than for our US clients. And we were challenged uh, a couple, three years ago with doing something uh, beyond just the development agenda to optimize the, the batch runtime of those, of those jobs that support those clients. And we ran into the classic scenario of the constraint of, of I.O. versus CPU. Um, and we did some things on the I.O. side and uh, needed to scale more on the CPU side. And we were on the Spark platform. And we, uh, again, looked at UCS as a way to uh, dramatically improve our price performance, migrating from Spark to x86. Um, and it provided a huge boost. And now we've created a bottleneck on the uh, I.O. side, which as we <laughs> talked before the show, is a classic conundrum that all of us have con uh, struggled with for the past 40 years. Yeah, yeah, Stephen, you always say you can never eliminate uh, bottlenecks, you just move them That's to another part of the system. Correct. There's You're always got to be uh, some part of the system. Point of failure. So, <laughs> how do you go through that architectural decision point as to uh, you know, where, where, where the resources get fit and where, where it makes sense well, to, to make I, change? You sound like a true performance uh, practitioner yourself, <laughs> so I, I'm sure you re realize that it, it's not a perfect science, right? You just try to move that bottleneck and continue to move up that scale, and uh, the US UCS side has allowed us to really go forward from a, from a performance on the CPU side. Now we're beginning to look at data and memory techniques on the I.O. side, a lot of the engineered appliance from Oracle and from EMC to sort of begin to, to, to strike that balance again uh, uh, beyond where we are now. Our constraint is, uh, we're I.O. constraint, uh, with uh, you know a, a CPU uh, infrastructure now that runs 30, 40%. So we've, we've got some work to do on the I.O. side. All right, so uh, I, I'm sure you have uh, lots of things that you've learned in this project. Where, where, where do you still see the vendors needing to do some work to help move things forward for you? Well, I think, and, and I think this platform is very helpful, and I think what's going on in the uh, engineer appliance space is very similar, is sort of a throwback to the 70s, 
where a firm brings together all the components so that you're not creating one-off permutations of an infrastructure on your own. So what, what Cisco is doing with UCS and sort of an ecosystem between network SAN and the server and what Oracle and other firms are doing on the storage side um, is continuing to consolidate all these components so you're really managing the ecosystem, not managing individual components to try to engineer this yourself. So talk about that from, from uh, you said you've been working on this platform a long time, you know. As, as Stu said, the, the tools available to you and, and the processes have changed dramatically. Absolutely. So how are you incorporating those? How are those kind of changing your product roadmap? And, and, and I wonder if you can speak to kind of productivity or the way that you're able to deliver value to your customers quicker, more efficiently, better, faster. How, how have you guys evolved over this Well, I, I think, time? again, not to reiterate the theme, but as firms, the, the infrastructure providers provide more consolidation of the complexity of these infrastructure components. We're focusing more on the business side. We're focusing more on how to deliver, deliver value to our clients from a, from a higher level from the technology than, than worrying about engineering infrastructure. Right. Um, and looking at balancing the systems, looking at more of a macro approach as opposed to a component by component approach. And we're not engineering one-off permutations, as I mentioned earlier. We are constructing um, systems that are comprised of um, engineered uh, elements that our, that our providers are, are giving us. And, and from an application development side, are you, do you find it's more kind of unleashing the, the, the power that you wish you had before with, this, with these new architectures, or is it really opening up new, new uh, territory, new fields, new places for your de app development to go? Uh, I, again, I, I guess what I would say is we move up a layer now, um, we're managing these, these environments in a different way than we did in the past. We're focusing more on the value of the, of the platform. Our technologists are able to value, uh, stress more energy on the uh, value of the platform in our clients as opposed to again being engineers at, at the component level. So Steven, one of the biggest changes we've seen uh, over the last 10 years is how we think about our data. Uh, so right. data used to be a challenge and of course, uh, lots of people are looking at things like analytics and other ways yep. to turn that data into more valuable information, new revenue streams. Uh, can you talk to us, is this something that you're seeing you know, in your organization to, yeah. to try to take advantage of all the information We're that you have? We're beginning to, I mean, the honest truth is with this platform, we're still uh, focused on kind of core services. We do have a data warehouse, and the data there is, is something that has clearly has value to our clients, but they have not consumed the analytics side to a great degree yet. Um, they're focusing more on uh, this consolidated platform and adapting it for their business. In our industry, uh, there's a lot of regional providers. There's not too many providers that provide a true global capability, and the one thing that we stress is we have a global platform that you can use for any region, anywhere in the world, and the consolidation that they're able to do around books of businesses on a single unified platform um, is really where they're spending a lot of their energy. They're not really exploiting the data yet, and we anticipate that they will, but they're not exploiting the data from, data from an analytics perspective yet. As, 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 uh, Steven, we talked a little bit about, uh, before we went on air, about kind of the craziness and the buzz here at Oracle Open yes. World 2014, and you were here 2011, three years ago, and also you bring a perspective, you're not here in the valley, sometimes those of us that live here, you know, we're kind of spun up in the whole thing, we forget there's people that aren't necessarily here. So, from your perspective, I wonder if you can talk about kind of the buzz at the show, what's the vibe, what do you, you know, how are your meetings going, especially relative to, you know, what it was like in 2011. Well, it, it's, we talked off uh, offline before the, the show started. It is amazing to me, well, for, you know, I'm a little more, little more Oracle-centric maybe than a few of your guests. Uh, it's amazing how these engineered systems have become sort of the, the thrust of the show from Oracle's perspective. You know, here's a firm that went from software to hardware. Um, Cisco is moving in some ways cases the other direction, I guess. Uh, and um, it just amazes me as to how these engineered solutions, which are really doing a lot of the heavy lifting for clients, Clients have really become such a thrust for for, um, for shows like this. Uh, it's a long way from where it used to be. We we moved from the 70s, 80s where it was all about consolidated systems to the 90s and early 2000s where there was all these distributed components and people were constructing their own and now it's come back. And the idea is uh, you know, letting, letting the firms do a lot of that engineering on your behalf. Yeah, so Steven, do you find, is the service support that you get seamless? Because you've got obviously you know, Oracle application, you've got Cisco components, you've got storage components that aren't from Cisco. What, what, what do you see on in your interactions and how they deliver to you and how they support it? I think you know, there's certainly not 
uh, seamlessness, if that's a word, between vendors, um, within vendors, with this new sort of generation of, of looking at how we uh, uh, deliver infrastructure. Within a vendor, it, it does bring a lot of simplicity when you have one firm to call and there's less finger pointing. But across firms, we still have that issue. We still have the issue of EMC dealing with Cisco, dealing with Oracle. Um, you know, you, they always want to know what you know. So, what version of of, of uh, of software do you have on the EMC side and the Cisco side when you're having an Oracle bug and same, same with the other providers. So I think it's across vendor, you still got a lot of issues, but within vendor, it, it's a lot better than it used to be because they're consolidating so much of those pieces. All right, so, so you, you've been working on this project for a long time. I, I, I wonder if there's anything you could tell your peers uh, as they uh, approach something like this. Oh what, what, what if you look back and say, geez, I wish I had done this differently, or well, that's, uh, you know. If I only knew. Where, where, where if I, I only knew. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it's really hard. Yeah. Um, uh, and I'm sure history will tell all of us, as it always has, that uh, very large technology projects are very challenging, and a great percentage of them, in fact, don't make it to market. Um, we're happy to say that uh, we've got real clients uh, running on our platform, but I, I think uh, it's one of those things where if you don't have a true um, sort of enterprise competency around large development, then you better get one when you venture on a project of this size and scale. Uh, we sort of learned as we went along, uh, and uh, we spent a lot of time and energy sort of building up that capability. We were we were a development firm, but we weren't an enterprise development firm of the of the stature that we we are now around the size of this of the size platform. And when did you make that shift? Do you think from kind of a development firm to what you described as an enterprise development? I would firm? say 2005 ish, about two years into. To it, okay. uh, we really started to ramp up um, and started to really uh, think about architectural engineering in a much more enterprise uh, perspective, in a, in a much more enterprise fashion. Um, and uh, I think that was probably the turning point when we realized how big of the, this thing was going to actually do. And was it driven by the customers? Was it driven by you guys just kind of waking up that, wow, this is a big opportunity, or were there just some so, some challenges you weren't able to overcome with the well, prior I, stage. I'm not sure if you're talking about the genesis of the platform of, or the actual migration of the enterprise orientation. No, you have you figuring out that we not, we're not a development company uh, anymore, we're actually an enterprise development shop and, and uh, what that really means uh, and how that's different. I think different. it was a broad-based realization. Um, I, I think our CEO, who, who actually was the one who envisioned this platform from the very beginning, he saw the need for a true global platform serving the industry. And uh, he's been very close to the project. Uh, he, he was in the early days up on a whiteboard doing some design drawings as to what he wanted the user experience to be and the like. So he's been heavily engaged from the very early days. So that kind of executive sponsorship really you know, created the discipline to stay on this thing for as long as we have. And <laughs> there were some really difficult days in the beginning. And he also, I think, helped move us toward a minor enterprise orientation when the time was, was right. It was sort of a, it was sort of a, um, research project at its beginning, and it just grew into a true development project as, as we moved along. Yeah, so Stephen, who, who did you guys lean on as you were you know, building this? Was it direct access to the vendors themselves? Was it, was it a channel partner? Who, who, who kind of gave you the most help and education uh, right, as you move forward right, here? It's, given the size of this thing, it was a broad set of, of, of firms. Um, we had development partners, and we had our infrastructure providers. I mean, we, I think we leaned on, on many, many providers to, to get us to where we are today. This thing is a, you talk about ecosystem, it's a village. It's a village of infrastructure, it's a village of, of application software, it's, a, it's a, a whole set of organizations within our firm that, to deliver and support the platform. So you can imagine the number of vendors that are engaged in trying to bring that together, both um, um, internal constituents and internal partners as well as outside partners. Well, that's some great message, that's some great advice for practitioners. So Stephen, thanks for stopping by. Absolutely. Projects are hard, it takes a village and stick to it, right? I think those are the yeah, those are the three right. key messages. So again, thanks for stopping by. We love to get people that are actually out there executing with these tools. Uh, we're watching the cube. You're watching the cube. We're here on the floor uh, at Oracle Open World 2014. We're actually in the Cisco booth. We'll be here for the rest of the day, day three of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. You're watching the cube. I'm Jeff Frick. Thanks for watching. We'll be back with our next guest after this short break.